the case of the missing data store or, well, phantom data store, whatever you want to call it. Let's have a look at this thing. So here we've got a valid data store and it's connected to a host. This one is not connected to anything. It's just hanging out in inventory. Does it have VMs in there? Well, it used to. <laughs> so these are like old phantom stubs. And um, the drive was moved from one host to another, so that's probably the root of the problem. But what to do about it is what I want to emphasize uh, here. So 6.82, newer. Yep, that's a real one. But this missing one supposedly has some properties. But, and you can actually rename it. So you can touch an inventory. But it's really strange. Um, so yeah, I want to just get rid of it. Now, it has no device backing, so that's pretty suspicious, right? Versus a legit SSD, which has a device backing. So it won't let me simply right-click and delete it. See how that's grayed out? So we're going to try this crazy article. It's a little um, long, but it seems like it has the most promise for fixing my problem. It's fairly recent. I'm on vSphere 7, by the way. Probably doesn't matter a whole lot. So we're going to go to um, the shell in good old putty uh, over to the session here, the VCSA appliance. I have to open a session. So let's get that going here. On my other screen, I got putty going. We'll log in. And Once we get the login, you know we're going to have to type shell. So let's reduce clutter a little bit. And let's bring this over. All right, so we got the directions. And we got to type all this. So might as well do it the cut and paste way. Okay, it gives me... Um, Hmm. Okay. You can type slash D to get a list of all the tables. Okay, so we're browsing the database here. Everything seems to be working. I tried to find the data store. After I could see the tables, I tried to find it. Purple, green, orange. Oh dear. Okay, so let's construct this in Notepad for you here. And let's go here. Let's get the name of that data store. Triple click, copy and paste, cancel, and substitute it there. And now we've Concocted a really uh, long command to paste it in here. Whoops. Okay, we got to break out of that. Right click, paste, enter, found it. Very nice. Um, kind of doubt it's being, it's connected to anything. So before I hit enter, I'm going to change that ID and then put a semicolon after it. 3089, semicolon. Okay, mine's uh, not, there's no object. So apparently there's not one object. There are two objects in the inventory are still connected. So this screenshot shows two. Um, entity ID, okay. Which object are these? So it goes through and tells me what to do. Okay, so can't remove them from the GUI. We're going to try removing the data store from the tables. So here we go. The data store ID. All right, so in our case, let's go back to Notepad. That might be a little easier here. Excellent. And let's get our data store name in there. Nope. 
just the ID. We don't need the name, right? So we do have a different number from there, however, and ours is called 3089. You remember that? So 3089 is the ID. Come on. 3089. And let's get that ready to go three times. And then we'll just paste one line at a time. I didn't really save any time there. Sorry about that, but you get the idea. Here we go. Right click, paste. Nice. Paste. Ooh. That's unfortunate. This is where, since I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm going to have a hard time recovering from that error. I don't have any snapshots. I did check that. All right, so remove the data storage from the tables. Entity ID 3089. Data store ID. And entity ID. So I don't know why it wants, yeah, I don't know. Let's up arrow a few times here. Zero rows left. Okay, so it might be gone. So let's hit refresh here. Nope. Can't delete it either. So I probably have to restart a daemon or something. Hang on. Do this your own risk. Before you're changing anything in the VCS database, you know, be careful. Yeah, no problem. Create a snapshot. I've got daily backups of my VCSA appliance. And they're automatic. All right, well, at this point, I'm probably just going to restart VCSA. And because um, I don't really know what demons are involved. And, well, this will be a thorough restart because I'll just restart the whole thing. Okay, we're restarting the system, the VCSA system, right? So now we just wait for that to finish. And we'll see, did I get rid of that phantom data store that's been haunting me for months? And it's kind of annoying. This is something to be aware of in a, say, a home lab where you might move an SSD from one system to another. It's best to detach it first. So unmount the data store and then detach it. That's another procedure for another day. Actually, I think I might have done a video on that a while ago. Um, but I'll come back here to this video in a few minutes after the VCSA appliance is done with its restart. All right, I'm back. It's about five minutes later. And all I did was click on the window, the Chrome tab, to bring up VCSA. And it should be bringing up login here. I had a pinned shortcut for Chrome. Logging into VCSA, where the uh, URL bar at the top should be hidden shortly. It looks like it's a little sluggish because I just uh, restarted it. It's actually not on an NVMe device right now either. It's just on a regular old SATA SSD. Um, but that was particularly slow. I think that's kind of normal though after a reboot. All subsequent logins should be mighty quick in my experience. So, this is the drum roll moment. Did I succeed at nuking my phantom data store in a lab where it's not that big to deal if I accidentally zap the wrong row in a table in the database that's in VCSA that you're really not supposed to be messing around with? But it's a lab, right? It's how you learn. Um, I don't know what my odds are of success. See the spinning wheel there? It's just trying to keep me on the edge of my seat. It just started spinning again. So that's acting a little weird. Let's see if we can see objects here. All right, that's slow. Let's just try logging in with a fresh Chrome client here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I need to make a new shortcut because whatever it's pointing to by default maybe doesn't exist. Okay, that worked. That worked, but it's very slow. Huh. 
All right. Well, if I really did mess up my VCSA, it looks like the next video I might be recording is how to restore a VCSA appliance from a backup. <laughs> I wasn't quite expecting that, but uh, maybe that's what I'm facing here. Because that doesn't look too healthy. Well, let's go to storage. Does that come up? Well, it's one way to clean the data store. Clean them all. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. How about host client? So logging straight into the ESXi host directly. Let's see how that looks. Does the system appear to be healthy? Well, that's kind of silly because it's just one of my ESXi hosts. Remember, it had no home. It, so we really need to look at VCSA. Well, that's interesting. Huh. All right. How's Vammy look? Good, good, good. Healthy, healthy, healthy. All that stuff. My daily backups. If we click here on end time twice we get early today so just a few hours ago so restoring should be possible because it does appear I am toast huh. <laughs> all right uh, there's going to be a multiple steps here. I'm going to need the ISO from my VMware for the latest VCSA 7.0B. I believe that's what I'm going to want to try to restore from as I run through the wizard. Because um, that's how it works. You're restoring the appliance and then the config. So let me go grab that. Never mind. CPU exhaustion. So the machine is very busy at boot. Why that is, I'm not really sure. But it um, looks like I might be out of the woods here. All right, and I think I've given it actually more vCPUs at one point, but we're still having some health issues, potentially. Hmm. So with CPU exhaustion, you're gonna have all kinds of zany stuff. And, um, Probably shouldn't have run that right now. And come on, I'm recording a video here. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and download uh, VCSA 7.0 anyway, just so I have it in my lab. Um, in case I ever do need to restore, it'll be a little less tense. 7.0B is the one I want. And it's the appliance. If I hit read more, you can see details about the ISO. Let's grab this guy now. And there it goes. It's going to take an hour. Getting a pretty slow download rate of 20 megabits per second. Okay, so this thing finished. And these are actually pretty normal to have in there. So we're going to not worry about that too much right now. Let's go and check out data stores. Here we go. Oh no, no. It is still there. <laughs> and right clicking, you still can't delete it. Ah, you know, I don't think I ever showed um, under configure um, for the hosts. There's no host backing device. There's really nothing to show you. Um, on all four of my hosts, when I look at the storage devices, this device isn't present. So I must have you know pulled it out and left it on a shelf or something. So it really is a phantom. But I have not succeeded in removing it. And my guess here is where I went wrong was... Um, Uh, here's someone saying a tef. There's less templates removed. The data store disappeared. Okay, couldn't remove from the GUI. Try removing from the tables. And remember, this middle one just failed. I don't know. 
this is an act of desperation, I have to say, to just go ahead and try again, but I'm going to try again. And the reason is, um, maybe it'll actually work this time after the reboot. I know it's a really long shot. But what's the worst that could happen? I have to restore from backup. So I'm fearlessly heading forward. Again, I would never hint you do this in a production environment. All right. Let's run the command again to check out the first line. What's it say when I run that? Oh, I forgot to get in that command mode. So that would help. So we're going to run this guy. And then run this guy. Three zero eight nine. So it didn't change any, but this command didn't want to work before. Oh, it worked. And if we try to delete here, we're probably going to get no results. Yep, zero. <laughs> okay. So maybe this next reboot is going to be a charm. But um, can we shut it down and give it more vCPUs? Let's do that. I've got a decent number of cores here. So while that's going, the ESXi host client is still running here. And this one has vCSA on it? No, that's the wrong one. So I'm going to point host client to the server that's running vCSA right now. And it just went down, but that is the one. So let's uh, have a look at its settings here. What's the deal with it? Four CPUs is not enough? Gosh, it's only a boot time issue here. So I'm, I'm going to leave that alone and just give it a good maybe 10 minutes to come up this time. And it's got 12 gigs of RAM, so that's pretty wild. All right, we'll be back in this video soon, um, hopefully with happiness to report, and uh, that'd be good. We'll see. Okay, this time I think I waited close to 10 minutes, and let's see if we have better luck with login speed this time after the reboot. Not the reboot, restart really, of the VM. I guess you could call that a reboot. And now we'll see is the phantom data store gone at last? And I spoke too soon or logged in too soon. So let me just uh, pause until I get this thing logged in again. Stand by. Okay, we're back. Here's the summary view from the home screen. Let's go right over to storage. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it worked. There you go. Ah, I like a fun project like that. It's too bad that it happened in the first place and it's a little clumsy, I would say. <laughs> it's kind of an understatement. Um, and it took two tries. So the story had a little twist and turn. Oh, what am I doing? You just double click here in the eye bar. There you go, and it resizes automatically. Um, so yeah, it worked out. Um, that thing had been bothering me for a long time and now it's gone. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoy this video. Uh, thanks for watching and for visiting Tinker Try, where I have a whole collection of vSphere articles and actually vSphere videos as well. Thanks again. Bye now.